Hi, I'm Sean Pratt. Welcome to the VoiceOver Insider Podcast, where we discuss all things to help you build your voiceover momentum. Today's host is Julie Williams. Julie, what's the topic of the day? I'm talking to Tracy Lindley today, who is voice talent extraordinaire. I mean, extremely talented and an expert also at marketing on LinkedIn. Well, at marketing in general, but particularly her her tool of expertise is LinkedIn. And that's what we're going to talk about today, how you can use LinkedIn to really enhance and grow your business. Tracy, thank you for being with us today. My pleasure, Julie. The VoiceOver Insider Podcast needs wonderful people like you. (laughs) Glad to be here. Let me ask you about marketing in general. Um, what do you see the value of marketing as uh, when it comes to a voiceover talent? And, and I'm not talking about going on pay to play. I'm not even talking about getting agents, but I'm talking about you getting down and dirty and marketing yourself. Well, the deal with that is to me, taking control of your own business. Um, if I am simply relying on a client to choose me from an audition or uh, an agent to put me forth in front of their client, I don't feel like I have enough control. I like to be able to feel as though I'm controlling my own business. And I really believe that direct marketing is a way to do that. Of course, you know, auditions are a great way to do that as well. You can't win if you don't play. But um, I do feel that my strongest you know, weapon in the arsenal has been direct marketing. And for me, the, the number one place that I have found success is through LinkedIn marketing directly. Right. You know, a lot of people think that it's an agent's job to market them, but it's really not. I mean, the agent's job is to get work for the agency. So any of their 100 people can get the job and they're going to make money and they've done their job. You are a commodity to them to bring money to there. But um, your job, and you're the only one who's going to do this, your job is to market yourself. So Tell me about marketing on LinkedIn. What made you decide to start doing it in the first place? Well, you brought up a great point about competition. It all leads back to how many people are are doing this. And I came in to the voiceover industry in 2014. Um, I started by the advice of a a friend in business. He suggested that I get on LinkedIn right away. So I did. And um, I didn't really know quite what I was doing, but I did my very best. I tried to fill out the profile as best as I could, and I didn't have any professional headshots, so at least I had a friendly-looking picture to put up there. But anyway, I started just kind of dabbling in it and exploring it, didn't really know much about it. I hadn't done any research. I was too busy researching how to do voiceover itself instead of you know, using marketing tools. Right. But I think that's probably one of the best things that I ever did for my business was to learn about the industry itself. When people are first starting out, I don't feel that they, there's a lot of people that simply throw a question out in a Facebook group and say, how do I get started in voiceover? And that is a really immature way to approach it because <laughs> I feel like if you don't, if you're not willing to go and do the research yourself, then you don't belong in any business. I just think it takes a lot of hard work. I know that's a little harsh, but I don't think that you're going to succeed if you don't take the bull by the horns yourself. Now, that's not to say that we don't need a hand up, that we don't need um, advice from others who have been there before, because absolutely that is true. Um, Jody Kringle in particular was somebody that was so kind as to answer a multitude of questions that I had as a new voice talent. Um, she was so nice to me. There were a lot of people that were really nice to me. And that's why I don't mind answering occasional questions from people. I do believe we need to help each other. And you have a great uh, Facebook group as well. Yes. So that's a place where people can ask questions and find out answers. But ultimately, it's up to each individual to make their career move forward, to move the needle. So I really believe that just simply dabbling, dabbling in LinkedIn isn't going to get you anywhere, which is the reason that, you know, it didn't get me anywhere. I was simply getting frustrated. I was on the pay to plays. But one day, um, someone reached out to me and they handed me a script basically and said, hey, can you audition for this? Um, A video producer that I had connected with, and I don't even remember how, I think at that point I was starting to kind of realize that nothing was happening and I had to do something. So instead of just connecting with voice talent, I had started connecting with producers, but I really didn't know what to do beyond that. 
And then once I started getting a, oh, thanks, thanks for connecting with me type of messages from those producers, I was like, oh, what would happen if I made the first move? What would happen if I introduced myself and, you know, did a, a friendly greeting? And so those little actions took, you know, took place after time. And this was probably halfway into 2015. So I'd been in the industry a little over a year at that point, like a year and a half. And that's when I got this video producer saying, hey, can you audition for me? I didn't get that particular job, but then he came back with a second job and I did book that second one a few mm -hmm. months later. So I started to realize that LinkedIn was not just a social media platform. It wasn't a Facebook, it wasn't an Instagram, whatever. It was a place that I could actually direct market my business and start building relationships and booking gigs. You know, you brought up a good point with um, connecting with um, voice talent. Um, uh, there are a lot of people, and again, I have the VoiceOver Insider Facebook page, um, the VoiceOver Insider Connect, rather, Facebook page, and I love having over 5,000, almost 6,000 people on there, and they help each other. But the thing is, if you make the mistake of spending all your time connecting with voice talent, you're not connecting with clients, and what happens is you're, you're confusing busyness with business. And you feel like you've worked all day, but you've really done nothing productive to advance your career. Unless you got like advice from somebody, but you know, they can answer a question maybe about a, a digital audio workstation, an editing issue, a, a, a question of like, this client wants me to work for this. Is it worth it? Uh, you know, that kind of thing. But you know, as far as the question, like, how do I get into voiceovers? I mean, it'll take me a year to explain that one to you. Thank you for listening to the VoiceOver Insider Podcast. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm John Harrison Goss. I'm an audiobook narrator, and I wanted to develop my e-learning narration skills, so Sean Pratt referred me to Julie Williams. Working with Julie was incredible. She really took my e-learning narration skills to the next level. And here's the demo she produced for me. Part of one-to-one -one marketing is nurturing customers, which requires new capabilities and processes. It takes time to build these, and we've learned a lot along the way. These new capabilities are powering our capacity to grow and deliver relevant marketing to our customers. You wouldn't expect to find something amusing as you meander through a graveyard. But that's what happens when you visit the resting place of Ron Popeil, because his headstone echoes the words he said so often in his life. But wait, there's more. Sun, surf, and sand are the essentials of an idyllic beach vacation. Toss in poolside relaxation and an ocean outing or two, and you have the perfect recipe for a fun-filled family trip or romantic getaway. These three escapes, one each in Oahu, St. Thomas, and Riviera Maya, offer all of the above, all year round. In the top left corner, select the File tab. Choose Options. In the new window, click on Calendar, and scroll down to Time Zones. Now select the checkbox that reads Show a Second Time Zone and choose a new time zone from the drop-down menu. Solid model representations of actuator mechanics or machine elements are processed by an OpenGL rendering engine, allowing you to visualize machine movements in 3D animations right on the HMI screen. Um, would you say that a friendly picture, like you mentioned before, is actually better than a headshot when you want to connect with people on LinkedIn? Well, I definitely think it needs to be a decent quality. Um, what I tell people is to pick one where you are not looking like some sort of model. You're looking approachable. You're looking at the camera, you're smiling, you're making eye contact, just as if you would with someone in real life. So whether it is from your own phone or from a professional photographer, I don't think matters a whole lot since that picture is so small. But I, I mean, obviously a professional headshot is going to be a better quality photo, but you know, today's iPhones or, you know, whatever you have, a lot of those cameras are really good. So we've advanced a lot. I remember my first picture being a bit grainy back in 2015, but a, a technology has really advanced to where you could get a decent selfie, um, but just don't, don't try too hard. Just make it look friendly. And, um, and I do want to go back to your, your comment earlier about the place that that voice talent play with you know 
how you are connecting and interacting. I will say that genuine relationships are never going to be wasted. Um, I do think that your marketing focus should absolutely be outward instead of within your own industry. However, I have gotten some really great clients from, um, say, a male in the industry. A lot of, you know, because a male can't necessarily sound like a female in many cases. And so if the spec is calling for a female, then he can't fit the bill. So he's going to want to refer some females to a client that he already has. And so I've gotten a really good e-learning client that I've made thousands and thousands of dollars from, from a good male friend who referred me to that client. So I will say though, that just dabbling around and answering this or commenting on that, like that's not a relationship. That's not a good friendship. It did take meeting, you know, the person I mentioned earlier, we met at a conference, an in-person conference. So meeting someone in person is not always possible at this time in life, but things are opening back up. We do hope to see those sort of things in the, in the very near future. But yeah, genuine relationships are just where we want to try to build that up. And I think that's the way that it works on LinkedIn as well. I mean, you're going to do your best to meet people and, and build those relationships. I think client relationships, they don't go as deep a lot of times. In fact, somebody commented on something that was a, a, bit, a bit personal to me, and I really didn't respond to, to that client because we don't have that type of relationship. So what I mean by genuine is letting them see who you are. It's only going to go to a certain level. I mean, human relationships are what they are. You're not best friends with your clients, right. but you are wanting to build something authentic so that they're like, Oh, you know, Julie would be great for that job. I really like her. I enjoy working with her. She always has a great attitude. She shows up on time. She has lots of energy. Let's pick her for that. So being top of mind has to do with those authentic relationships, I think. Right. Yeah, I agree totally. And when it comes to the talent, you know, um, it is good to build relationships with talents as well. I have the same thing, a male who always refers me. And, and look at what Jody Krangle did for you. I mean, it, it is good to have somebody to kind of help you come along, but you don't want to spend all day on that to the um, detriment of your actual marketing. Um, I, I made $30,000 less last year than I did in a lot of previous years. And, and some of that might have had to do with COVID, but I attribute most of it to the fact that I spent six months house hunting, getting paperwork together for the mortgage companies. I mean, that takes forever. And then packing up a house and then moving and then unpacking a house. All of that stuff takes time. And, and of course, that time didn't come away from uh, doing voiceovers and it didn't come away from anything else that is, is income producing. Well, but yes, it did because it came away from marketing. I mean, that's what had to go because that wasn't urgent. That wasn't something that had to be done now. That audition has to be done by tomorrow. The job has to be done by 6 p.m. The, you know, um, the, 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 the private coaching students have an appointment. Um, and then there's other things in life. You have that doctor's appointment that has to be done. So what ends up uh, giving sometimes is marketing. And I can tell you that, you know, I mean, my income was still very, very solid, but it is down $30,000. And that does make somebody take notice. And I attribute that all to marketing. So I'm going to be picking up the marketing more like with the LinkedIn um, that you've been helping me with getting my profile totally together and then uh, getting out and contacting people on LinkedIn to get more business. You bring up a great point, Julie, about saying that marketing is the first thing to get thrown out the window. Um, Really, that is what is driving your business forward as a voice talent um, is, is making sure that you have clients in the pipeline. At this point in my career, I'm, I'm not doing a ton of marketing because the current clients that I have are keeping me busy, but I do make it a point to post on LinkedIn regularly. I do reach out here and there, but if I were to continue to market the way that I was in the beginning, I would be overwhelmed with work. Back in the beginning, you know, I would set aside time to make sure that that was an absolute non-negotiable part of my day that was happening. And when I was first starting out in my voiceover business, of course, I didn't have any business. And so I knew that it was up to me to generate it. Actually, when I started my voiceover career, it was later that year that I found out I was pregnant with my fourth baby. So there is no right or wrong or best or worst time to start a business. Wherever you are in life, you've just got to make it work. And so I ended up having that baby in July of 2015. And at that time, my voiceover business was starting to, you know, it was starting to pick up. I still wasn't seeing a ton because I really do believe it takes three to five years to start making a decent income. I think I hit 
my, like my pre, you know, like my corporate job sort of income around year three. And I think it was the end of year six that I got to a six figure income. So it just, it takes a while. This is not going to happen overnight. But one thing that I did that I will never regret is setting aside a solid hour while my sweet little girl was sleeping. Um, and the other kids, I let them watch PBS kids or something. Um, I'm speaking to all the parents out there. I mean, it is not easy to have a voiceover career when you have children. Right. Or let's just say that I'm speaking to somebody that has a full-time job and they're trying to make voiceover their full-time job, but it's not there yet. So they're doing their regular job and then voiceover is sort of their side hustle. What you can do is take an hour out of your day or if you don't have an hour, 30 minutes, but use it not to answer email, not to audition, but to direct market, whether it's through LinkedIn, whether you're doing um, cold emails, whatever it is, make sure that it's something that's going to be effective though. And it's, it's focused and it is non-distracted from social media, answering phone calls, whatever else. And you need to do, you know, if you've got agents and, and other clients and stuff, you'll still have to do your auditions. But if you really want to grow your business, you have to take that focused time and devote it to marketing, whatever the time may be. Um, and I would reach out to about 10 to 20 people um, in that time. And for me, I only had about an hour and a half total to work because that's what she would nap for. That's how long I would feel okay with letting the kids watch TV because I didn't want them watching TV all day so right. I could work. Um, so it's just taking that focused time. And, um, and I actually, you know, I, we haven't brought up my course yet, but I'll just bring it up quickly that um, I do have a course on LinkedIn marketing called the VO Edge, and that's specifically for voice talent. And in there, I have a handy tool that is simply called five daily reach outs. And if your goal is to grow your business, you have to be doing this on a constant basis. And it's only, a, it's just a little worksheet that helps you remember and have a physical, tangible record of you reaching out to five new people each day, writing their names down, writing down what method that you used. Because when we track something, we're more likely to do it because we don't want to lose the streak. You and I both have Apple watches and you don't want to go a day without closing your rings, right? You don't want to not do your, your, your efforts that you have set for yourself. And, and heaven forbid you break the streak, right? We don't want to break the streak. So you've got to keep the momentum going if you want to see real change in your business. You know, the voiceover um, edge, that's a, a really good way for you guys to, to get into uh, LinkedIn and really figure out how to market yourself productively, not just kind of dabbling in it like you might on Facebook, but really productively do it. So I highly recommend that. Where can people find out about that? So that is at the VO for voiceover edge.com. So we've been talking to Tracy Lindley, who is an incredible voice actor and also expert at LinkedIn. And that voiceover edge is wonderful because it doesn't just talk about the value of LinkedIn. I mean, it tells you down and dirty how to market your business on LinkedIn productively. So thank you, Tracy, for being with us. It has been a pleasure, Julie. Thank you. And we'll talk to you next week on the voiceover insider podcast. I hope you found that information helpful and enjoyable. If you would like a free strategy session with Julie Williams to talk about your VO career, just email julie at voice-overs.com and we'll get you on the schedule. If you'd like to train in nonfiction audiobook narration, I'd be happy to work with you. Email Pratt at comcast.net. Thanks again for joining us today. We'll catch you next week on a brand new episode of the VoiceOver Insider Podcast.